The way I use Tmux has changed a lot in the last year, so let's talk about it. Over a year ago, I made a video about smart Tmux sessions. And from that, I was able to release a Tmux plugin called T. I learned a lot. It was written in Bash and we had a few hundred people show interest in it. However, I found that Bash was not powerful enough to scale and to grow the feature sets that I had in mind. And so I rewrote the project in early 2024. And now I'm happy to introduce Sesh. It is a brand new CLI written in Go, carrying over all of the good parts of the T script and offering a lot more features and some performance boosts as well. So instead of using TPM to install it as a Tmux plugin, this is just a binary that you install on your machine using Homebrew or Nix. There is also a bonus Raycast extension, which I'll talk about later. So make sure to stick around to the end of the video. For those that aren't familiar with how T originally worked, basically Sesh is combining Zoxide. By the way, my friend Dreams of Autonomy has a really great video on Zoxide in combination with Tmux sessions to create a really powerful and smart and efficient workflow. Sesh is best used with two commands. The first is the list command, which does exactly what it sounds like. It just lists all of your Zoxide records, all of your custom config records, which we'll talk about soon, and any Tmux sessions that might be running. The next command you need to know is sesh connect, and this is what drives the behavior of sesh. Just like Zoxide, you can connect to anything, and Zoxide will look up and find that value. So if we connect to downloads, it will create a Tmux session called downloads and put you in that directory. However, sesh becomes incredibly powerful when you use the connect command with the list command. We'll use a tool called FCF to give me a autocomplete fuzzy finder. And as I pick the project that I want, like downloads, when I select it, it will create that session. When I start up the terminal, I hit S to give me a fish abbreviation of something similar using the gum CLI, which I personally prefer to use. And I can pick the project I want and it will create that session. Sesh becomes really powerful when you create a custom Tmux binding like I did with K um, and will display a pop-up that allows me to switch between my Tmux sessions as well as create new ones on the fly by using a key binding. I've talked about macOS key bindings in the terminal before, and you can see that I have it bound to command K, which feels very similar to like Discord's command palette and GitHub's command palette and a lot of other common toolings that use the command K as a sort of command bar. And so for me, my command bar is sesh that allows me to move around between sessions at ease very quickly. Sesh in its most basic form will take the folder that you pick and use it as the name of the session. However, the real power of Sesh comes when you contextualize your sessions. So if I wanted to look at specifically the content of my website, we can see here that this directory building off of the git root and then building out a more complex session name. But again, all of this is just done automatically for you. Another great example is git work trees, which I'll be making a whole video on in the future. So please make sure to subscribe. In this example, you can see that I have a working branch for version two of Sesh, which I'm rewriting. And so if you pick a folder that's part of a bare git work tree, it will prepend the folder that all of those work trees live in as a sort of identifier to help you be more organized in your session naming. There is a very powerful feature, which we'll go into next, where you can create custom configurations, which allows you to do some really, really powerful stuff. So the configuration is written in Toml and it will live in your .config slash sesh folder. And so there's just a file that you name sesh.toml and it allows you to create custom configurations, which can include things like your home directory, downloads or specific projects. And we'll go through one by one and I'll show you how this works. So a session is identified with the double brackets in the word session. You can have as many of these want in your file. You can even import other Toml files into this one if you want to sort of break apart your configurations. A session typically has two configurations. One is where the session needs to be located. And the second is the name of the session. But my favorite feature is the startup command. And there's also a startup script, which we'll talk about both. So let's improve on the downloads session. Typically, I want to view files 
when I'm going to the downloads folder. And so just like that, when I open it, we can see that I immediately am shown my file picker and I can go through and do what I need to do. So sesh configs allow you to be a lot more accurate and to the point with what it is you want to do. One of my favorites is the tmux config, which allows me to just open the tmux config file immediately. And so this command is prioritized when I type tmux. It's always the first one that results. You'll see the cog identifying to me that it's a custom session. And when I run that, it just opens up the tmux config file. The startup script is really simple and to the point. And within a few seconds, you can create new sessions. However, if you want something a little bit more powerful, like a Tmuxinator, Tmuxifier, those kinds of toolings, and these scripts are fairly simple, like I want to split a window, I want to select a pane, I want to run a command. And combining that with Sesh, we can now do something like start up a website, as well as open up my file picker and get things moving all with one step. But my favorite feature is the ability to set a startup command as a default. I typically want to go to a file when I switch between sessions and projects and repositories and work trees. And so now if I was to open up a Zoxide result that doesn't have a custom configuration, I just always want to open up NeoVim with a file picker and my file picker in particular sorts everything by most recent use. And so everything is just always at my fingertips and it's really great, it's really fast. And in general, there's much less keystrokes happening. Everything gets presented to me exactly the way that I need it. And so as you start using Sesh, Zoxide, of course, will continue to increase its score. And so the ones you use the most will show up first, as well as all of your active Tmux sessions show up in this list. And all of your custom configurations always show up before the Zoxide results. And so you're always prioritizing everything that's kind of most important to you. As you get into the flow of it and you learn the muscle memory of your switcher, you can begin to go to projects in lightning speed. You can get to as many projects as you want as quickly as you want by just typing a few letters at a time. And one of my most favorite things about Sesh is that if I was to kill the Tmux server, it would be no problem at all to just reopen up everything that we just were talking about within just a few seconds. And so just like that, you can immediately begin to see the benefit of being able to quickly and effortlessly get to anything that matters to you within three to five keystrokes for me typically. Um, it could be even less depending on how you go about naming things. And it's just really great and really fast and really simple. So I promised to talk about the Raycast extension. I have it bound to Alt-Shift-A, and when I do that, it pulls up all of my sessions, all of my configurations, all of my Zoxide results, including the score, which is kind of cool. And so if you're ever not in the terminal, but you want to get to something, it's smart enough to find the session, focus on the terminal, and get you to the session that you want. Tmux does have to be running in order for this to be useful, but I think it's fun as a sort of companion to the main workflow. So I would say the only real friction in using Sesh is making sure that you add records to Zoxide. Um, you can do this by CDing, but I really like this ZAD shortcut that I've written that allows me to list directories and use XARGs to pass them into the Zoxide add. And just like that, I'm able to dump whatever sort of groups of directories that are most important to me into Zoxide really quickly. And that's it. I hope that you download Sesh and start using it and start getting a sense of how you can speed up your workflow using these tools. And thank you so much to all of those who have already contributed to the project. And if you didn't know, I live stream on Thursdays. Often I am coding Sesh live. People get to interact with me and talk about all of these things together, even help make some decisions along the way to make sure that this is the best project that it can be. And I have a Discord community where we talk about all of this stuff, Tmux and NeoVim and macOS and keyboards and all sorts of things. So come join us and have conversations there. And last, please make sure to star the project, tell it to your friends, and there's much more videos to come. So if you want to know more about Tmux, NeoVim, macOS, workflows, being efficient, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.